Live? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tanya Rivera, and if you're watching this on the playback, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified next time I upload or do a live. So today's live is going to be answering a lot of the questions I get on Instagram about nursing school, particularly LIU Brooklyn. So if you have any questions, now's the time. Welcome, guys. I'm not hearing anything. I hope you guys are hearing me. You are? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna check on Instagram while you guys get your questions ready on some of the common questions that I get. One of the common questions that I get is where you have to wear your scrubs. So your scrubs you wear for lecture, for lab and clinicals. If you are in your first semester, you probably won't have to get any clinicals because I don't think any of the classes come with clinicals, but you will have to wear your scrubs if you're going in person for lab. So like health assessment lab, you would have to wear your scrubs. And I believe farm lab, you have to wear your scrubs. But lecture classes like patho, informatics, contemporary <laughs> topics, um, classes like that, you don't have to wear your scrubs. You can wear whatever you want. Of course, still, you know, wear something presentable, but you don't have to wear your scrubs for those classes. What's another common question I get? I may have to repeat these when you guys ask more questions, but if you have any questions, put them in the live chat. If you don't see um, live chat, it should be next to the like button. Right in the middle of the screen, it should say live chat. Just click that and then you can type your questions and I'll see them right here and answer them. Okay. So we got one question. Uh, I wanted to know if they give quizzes or exams for informatics. So when I had informatics, I did have um, Professor Olga. I did not have quizzes, but I remember at the end of the class, she did say that next semester is you're going to have quizzes and that it was all our fault because we didn't do the reading. So she implemented quizzes for the future classes. So I do think you are going to have quizzes. I don't think you're going to have exams, but you should be able to go to Blackboard and go under content and look for the syllabus, and then the syllabus should tell you if there's any quizzes or anything like that. Most likely you should be getting your, your syllabus like anytime this week. I already got all the syllabuses for, um, for my classes. So you should be able to go to Blackboard, go to content under informatics and see from your syllabus if there's gonna be quizzes, but I'm pretty sure there, there are quizzes. I don't think there's exams. Um, how many classes did you take your first semester? I took a lot of qu classes my first semester and I regret it. That was way too many classes for one, um, for your first semester. I had informatics, no, I had farm, I had farm lab, farm lecture. No, so farm lecture, farm lab, I had health assessment, health assessment lab. Um, back then there was another course called geriatrics, caring for the older adult, I had that that came with a clinical. So they, they made us go into clinicals right away. So basically I had like about five classes, like and each of the classes had different sections. So it was very overwhelming. I'm so glad they stopped doing that. So for your first semester now, you don't have to go straight into clinicals. Before you used to have to do clinicals like a few months after your first day, like you'll do lab for a couple months and then boom, you'll go right into the hospital first semester. Now they do it a little bit different, which I think is better. It eases you guys into the program a lot better. So for, to answer your question, I took like five classes my first semester. Um, I'm not sure what 211 is. Let me know what nursing 211 is. Okay, someone else asks is, what is the maximum credit allowed for a nursing student for each semester? So there's a track that you have to follow now. Let me show it. I'm gonna put it in the description box because I also get a lot of questions about the track. Okay, hold on. Let me crop this because the person's name is on it. And I'm gonna type this up and show you guys. You guys should have this. Um, should have this, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't, honestly. Okay, 
I don't know if you guys can see it, but it kind of looks like that. You should have something like that that tells you exactly what you're supposed to um, do first semester, second semester, and so on. So first semester, you're supposed to take 210 contemporary topics, 211 informatics, 220 and 220 lab, that's health assessment, 330 patho, 340 and 340 lab, that's farm. So if you are taking farm, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you go and watch my how to study for farm finals um, video, especially if you have Professor Daco, just go watch that video because that's all you're going to need. You're really not. A lot of people overstudy for farm and farm is one of those things where you you can get easily overwhelmed. That's why a lot of people say farm is hard, but it's kind of like you have, especially if you have Professor Daco, you really only need to know the major signs and you only need to know the major um adverse effects and things like that, the, the big points. Not You might get overwhelmed when you read in the textbook, um, you know, a medication can cause all of these different adverse effects. You don't have to memorize all of them. You just have to memorize the one that he bolds or the ones that he kind of stress. So making concept maps like I showed in that video will help you tremendously. I highly recommend watching that video. I will link it down, I'll link it down below, but it's called um, How to Study for Farm Finals. Okay, what other questions do we have? God bless all of you who have all God. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not trying to throw shade, but God bless y'all. I remember the first day, um, it was like a, a slap in the face because it was like, oh, um, you know, I don't give A's. Right off the bat, I don't give A's. I was like, wow. And I dead serious, did not get an A, by the way. I, I was um, borderline a B and B plus, and I got a B. That was fun, fun times. Um, what is the maximum credit? Um, so yeah, the, oh, so the question was, what is the maximum credit, credit? So I think that's the maximum credit. There's also an accelerated track, and I think accelerated students take more classes because they finish in less time. So they can take, if you get approved for the accelerated track, then you can take more, but I do not recommend that at all. I really don't. Full-time is stressful enough. I really don't know how accelerated students do it. Um, they gave me her last minute, oh, five classes, I think is insane. It really is. I think it's insane as well. I really do. That's why I'm very like mad that they got rid of the part-time track because I was on the part-time track when I got back into the program. If you haven't watched that video already, um, the failing nursing school video, you would know that um, I failed nursing school because I failed patho and farm my first semester because I was working full time and blah, 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 blah. So I got back into the program and I had to take those two classes over, got an A in the classes and continue from there. And then when I continued, I couldn't take certain classes because I needed to take health assessment first. So basically I was part time this whole time, this semester, um, this last semester fall, I'll be full time. But all those other semesters, I was part time. And that's the only reason I was able to do well in those classes, because I was part time. So I'm I don't know why they took away the part time track. The part time track is like the best for people who are working, who have kids, who have like other things going on, because otherwise, if you're full time, you kind of like don't have time to do anything else. Unless you have a job that's like chill and you can like study at your job, then you can you can be fine. But that was not the case for me. Informatics is mad boring. <laughs> it's very tedious. It's like, it's one of those classes you just have to get through. But it's not hard. Like, to me, farm and patho are actually hard. Like, the exams and everything like that. But informatics is just tedious. And boring, yeah. Took it in the summer, wanted to kill myself. <laughs> Daco is the best professor that school has. Like, they need to give him a raise ASAP. I love Professor Daco. He is so good. Like, if you get Professor Daco for a farm, like, God has blessed you. That's all I'm going to say. Like, because he's so straightforward. He tells you exactly what you need to know for exam. If you pay attention in class, you're going to be fine. Like, and he makes it so easy to understand. Like, he doesn't overcomplicate the drugs and things like that. And then the way he teaches, like, he might make a joke or something like that. And then in med surge, you would be learning about a drug and you'd be like, oh yeah, Professor Daco said that. And it'll just, it just sticks with you. Like the way he teaches, he makes it stick with you and you need farm like for the rest of your life. So it's one of those classes, like I really recommend <laughs> getting Professor Daco. Talk about path through patho too. I have, yeah, I don't know who Ryan, Professor Ryan is. I'm not sure. 
I can't help you there. But what I can say about Pat, though, is that, and this is coming from, from someone who failed patho first and then passed it with an A. So I think I know how to pass patho. Like, I know what I made my mistakes on the first time I took patho, and that was not reading the textbook. So patho is, like, one of the only classes that I would say get the textbook. The textbook you need for patho for sure. Because every time you go to class, it's either exam or a quiz. Like, it's just back to back. As soon as this message starts, day one, you learn whatever chapters you're going to learn. And then the next class, you have a quiz. And then the next class, you have an exam. And then the next class, you have a quiz. And then the next class, you have an exam. Like, and it's going to go like that and go like that until the semester is done. So what you have to do for patho is read the tech, read the chapter that you're going to be discussing. Like, if the chapter is on... Especially if it's something that you know you don't understand well. Like me, I'm not good with cardiac. If you guys know me or follow me on Instagram, you know that I am a labor and delivery girl. Like I like labor and delivery. I like women's health, midwifery, stuff like that. Cardiac, not for me. So when we got to the cardiac chapter, I was like, oh, no. God help me. Like when we had to like learn about how blood flows through the car and all the chambers and ventricles, I was like, Lord have mercy. I was literally like. How am I going to do this? But what I had to learn is that you have to read the chapter before class so that when you're in class and they're teaching, you can ask your questions right there. Because if you don't, the next class, you're already getting quizzed on it. So when precisely when are you going to ask your questions if you didn't get something? You know what I mean? If you didn't understand something, didn't catch it in class, when are you going to get to ask questions? You can email, but that's not the same. Like if you really don't understand something, email, emailing back and forth is not going to cut it. So for patho, read your chapters before class, whatever, the, check the syllabus from day one, log on right after this live and check your, check Blackboard, see if they put up the syllabus, write down in your planner when all the quizzes and exams are and say the quiz is on Wednesday, go back to the previous Wednesday and say, and write down, start studying for a patho quiz next week so that you can like map out everything. And just read the chapter before class and ask the questions that you have when you like whatever questions you have, even if you skim the question, even if you don't have time to read the chapter, even if you skim the, uh, the chapter for patho, it will help you so much. At least skim it. I know like in the beginning, in the beginning, it's kind of easy to keep up with that. But then like towards the middle, like the middle of the semester, you might get burnt out. But when you get burnt out, at least just skim the chapter. It will help you so much. And then if you have any questions, you ask it in class. That will help you guys a lot, trust me. Okay, um, let's see, what other questions? Accelerated program is only for, no, I think the accelerated program is for people without a license. Um, yeah, no, you don't need an RL, RN license for the accelerated program, but double check on the website, but I don't think so. Um, I know a couple of accelerated students who just graduated and I don't think they had a license. I think you just have to be, you have to have certain grades and probably get approved for it because they know that the accelerator program is so much more difficult that they wouldn't want to like, just, you know, if you had like, okay grades this whole time on prereqs, they're not going to put you in the accelerator program because they know you're not going to be able to handle it because you can barely handle it. Even people who got like A's on prereqs could barely handle the first semester in nursing school. So they, I don't think um, you need a license, but I do think you need amazing grades. Okay, it gave me five classes. I had four, and today they emailed me saying that I have to add, I have to add informatics. Well, if they say you have to do it, you got to do it, Kareen. That's the track. Like, there's no, there's no choice in it now. Yeah. See, if you have a bachelor's, you can be accelerated. Yep. Um, patho and farm goes hand in hand. Patho and farm does go hand in hand. Um, I kind of, it was sometimes it wasn't going hand in hand for me because like, I don't know if it was just the section that I was in. Sometimes I was learning something in farm that I didn't learn in patho yet. So it was a little bit off, but it does go hand in hand. Like if they correlated properly, it will go hand in hand. When you're learning about, you know, the cardiac diseases in patho, you'll be learning about the cardiac drugs in farm. So it does like work out really well. Best teacher for informatics? I do not know. I had Olga. We already spoke about that. So I can't help you there. Um, if anybody wants to answer Kareem for the best professor for informatics, help a sister out. Um, did you use applied? Yeah, so that's what I was saying before. The patho textbook, you did not need it in class, but you do need to read it to do good for the exams. 
that's the that's the only thing like the to me the well that's when I took patho I can't remember the teacher I had but I don't think she's here anymore anyway but the professor that I had and I think it's still the same you do need to read the chapter because the exam is pretty much going to be based on that and the slides so even if you can't read the book even if you can't read the whole chapter like word for word just skim it and then um Go through your lecture slides and whatever the lecture slides focus on, read that paragraph. If the lecture focused on like one thing specifically, like what whatever it is, like if it's hypothyroidism, whatever, like if you see that that was a lot of the lecture slides, then go and actually read the full chapter for that section. And then do like the practice questions at the end. That would help that would help too. So yeah, you do need the patho book. That's that's one I would say get. I did not use my farm book though. I'm gonna tell y'all that much. I did not use my farm book. I did not use my contemporary topics book. I did not use my informatics book. No, I did not use the informatics book. There was like, in informatics, there's like this um, assignment that she gave that was like, um, you had to find a keyword on the chapter that you were doing that week and then um, write a definition like you literally just have to pick a, a keyword from the chapter and write a definite, like write a sentence using that word. So I will get it from the textbook. But honestly, like that takes five seconds. I could have just saved my money, not get that textbook and just borrow somebody's textbook for two seconds, find the keyword, write it, upload it. And that's it. So for informatics, I would I would say see see if y'all could share the book because I, I really don't think it's necessary. Um what else? Contemporary topics. No, you don't need a book. Um, health assessment. Some people use their health assessment books. I did not. I did not. For me, I had Professor Payne and the slides were enough. Yeah, the slides were enough for health assessment. Did I use it for lab? No, no, I did not. So yeah, my advice is do not buy the textbooks until you see, like, feel out the class. You're not going to be behind if you don't have all the textbooks um, on day one. Just wait and see if you can get the textbook. And when you do need the textbook, rent it from Chegg. Rent it from Chegg and send it back because you're not going to really use those textbooks really ever again. So yeah, when you graduate, you're probably going to use like an NCLEX review book, not really the books that we use in school. I don't know. That's a personal preference. I know a lot of people who like to buy books and they buy like every single book. And sometimes it'd be like a whole, you know, set of books that's like, $300. I have not, I have made it this far y'all and I did not buy all those books. So take it or leave it. Um, what is ATI testing about? So ATI testing is basically like preparing us for the NCLEX. It's like not something you have to purchase. It's just something that you have to add. Um, you have to make an account on ATI testing.com and then you, your teacher will give you a code for you to add your class to ATI and you will most likely get like um, quizzes and um, sometimes homework from ATI. So that's what ATI is. It's basically just like a program for them to be able to give you NCLEX style questions and quiz you and stuff like that, give you homework and stuff like that. And it comes, it's, it's not free because I'm sure it's somewhere in our tuition, but you don't have to pay out of pocket for it. There are some things you have to pay out of pocket for like some other programs that are similar to ATI like Evolve and CoursePoint. You do have to pay for your for those. That's why I say, like, don't buy the textbook until you see that you absolutely need it. Like, I'm telling you guys, Patho, that book is cheap. You can even get the, the old version if you want to save more money because all of the versions of that book are the same. You can get the old one. It's just that maybe, like, if you get the old version, maybe chapter one is going to be one in one version, and then in the old version, it'll be chapter three it's really the same exact words, but it'll just be listed as a different chapter. It'll be the same exact thing. So if you want to save money on the patho book, just buy that. You can rent it, the old version from Check. That's probably going to be the cheapest option. Or you can buy it from eBay and buy the old version used. Um, for how many hours do you suggest studying for path for um, pharmacology? Hmm. I guess like maybe like two hours per, no, like one hour per day would be good, honestly. Cause um, in the beginning, you'll probably just start off with antibiotics. You could just follow the video that I made, how to, how to study for farm finals, make a concept map and just like, I don't even know how to explain it. I wish I had a concept map, but it's in, I put it away. Cause obviously I'm done with farm, but 
basically just make you know what i'll show you guys hold on Ugh. okay so this is what i'm telling you guys to do for farm say it's antibiotics you make a little circle like this you make a little circle like that that says antibiotics and then you just um go out with the lines and say it's penicillin for this one you write all the you write all the um drugs that you cover that are antibiotics and then you just go out and write like you know the adverse effects the pharmacokinetics like how the drug works then you write like you know any any information that you know you need to use right there and you put it all on one page so that you could see the difference between all of them and when you get the slides when um your professor puts up the slides you'll get what i'm saying more because it'll be in different sections because you're going to learn each drug in a section so i would say for farm you don't need to over study once you make your map and you review that map maybe like an hour every day I would say you'd be fine because once you put it on a map like this, it'll be easier for you to, you won't have to keep reading over the whole chapter. You get what I'm saying? I didn't used to read the chapter. I used to get 90s on, um, on farm exams the second time I took it. So I learned that I was, when I first took farm, I was reading the book word for word and it's humongous. I don't know if it's the same textbook. I'm pretty sure it is. It's humongous. I used to waste so much time reading the book and reading into too much detail about each drug. So I used to waste time when if I just made the, the concept map and study what was actually important for the test, I would not have did bad. You know what I mean? So that's why I made that video on how to study for farm finals. And then another one, I think I have another video how to study for farm um, that's why I made those two videos because once you make those concept maps for fa for farm, totally fine. You don't need anything else. Where did you get the textbook from? The cheapest, I think it's Chegg. Chegg is usually cheapest, but you can look around. Sometimes you could get a PDF of a textbook for free. So check those, um, those PDF sites or, um, what are they called? Torrents. You could check Torrents. Test taken tips for med surge. Med surge was not my my cup of tea. I did not do amazingly well in med surge. I got to be in med surge by like barely. I barely got to be. So test taking tips for, for med surge. I had um, Professor Osborne. I feel like I just passed med surge by the grace of God. I really I don't think I did a good job with mood med surge at all. <laughs> like, but med surge, I would say the same thing, like the same thing as Pat though. The the best way to go is like reading the lecture slides ahead of ahead of time. And I don't even think concept maps help for for um med surge. It's really just content. And then doing practice questions. Do as many pack like for example, if your professor puts up um a practice question during the slides, Google that question. Put it in on Quizlet, and if you find the set that that came from, study all of those questions because most likely that's where your exam questions are going to come from. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> yeah, um, studying for T's would be helpful before getting into the program. So T's wasn't that hard for me. I would say just get the um, get the handbook that it comes with. Um, there's a there's a a review book that's on the website. Just go exactly through that textbook. I mean, finish the whole review book and you'll do fine. Because for the T's, I remember I saw exact questions that was on the T's um, review book on the T's. So just do the textbook. I mean, the review book that it come that they recommend, and that'll be fine. Do you have to wear the LIU scrubs to lab? Yes, you do. You have to wear LIU scrubs to lab unless you chose to go online this semester, then you can wear whatever you want. You can be up in your PJs. But if you did choose to go on campus, actually, matter of fact, comment um, in the chat how many of you guys are doing online or are you going in person next week? Um, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, you have to wear scrubs for clinicals and lab. Lecture, you can wear whatever you want. I know that was a question I used to have a lot 
when I was first um, coming into the program because I thought you wore your scrubs all the time, but no. For lecture, you can wear whatever you want. Lab, you have to wear your scrubs and you have to wear white shoes. I remember um, when we were on campus before COVID came and ruined, all, <laughs> ruined some lives. Um, yeah, we had gotten in trouble, not we, but I guess my cohort, yeah, we kind of got in trouble because a lot of people were wearing like white sneakers with laces and they specifically told us not to wear sneakers with laces. Um, oh, and if you haven't already, guys, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so we can do this again next week because I think I'm going to do this a weekly thing so you guys can like get to know each other. And, you know, if it will help you guys a lot if you had friends in your in your same classes. So definitely use this to network. And yeah. It's that nursing is a team effort from beginning to end. I feel like nursing school is a team effort. You need your friends to help you get through these programs. And then even afterwards, um, all the people that I know who are nurses now say that it's still the same. You still need your, your fellow nurses to help you out sometimes. Like it's really a team effort. The whole field is a team effort. So definitely network and get to know people in your class so you guys can study together and stuff. And then share stuff. Sometimes you'll find somebody, sometimes you'll befriend someone just randomly and they'll like give you the PDF of the textbook and you're about to buy it and they'll save you like $200, you know what I mean? Or you can study together. Or sometimes you might get overwhelmed in the middle of the semester and you might forget that some ATI thing is due and they'll just text you and be like, oh, did you do the ATI? And you'll be like, oh crap, like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't tell you guys how many times having friends has saved me in this program. So definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay. You going in person? Gotcha. Online, online. A B is a B. <laughs> That's true. Um, I will take that B and run, girl. I'm done with like when I first started a program, I was like, oh, I want to get all A's, blah, 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 blah. Now I am broken. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if a B is a B. I will take a B all the way down to that graduation line, okay? Um, get your crew, definitely get your crew, get your crew. Don't like, you know, don't get caught up with certain people who are like users who you like would just use you for everything that you got. And then I have experienced that a lot in nursing school. Don't just like get people or have people around you who are just like there to use you. And then, you know, next semester you would not even hear from them. I mean, it's okay to like, you know, nursing school is hard. So I understand when people are like, you know, busy and their semester is going hard so they don't have time to hit you up anymore. But you would know the difference between that and like somebody who's just trying to use you. What is the ATI? So the ATI is just, um, it's kind of just a website for them to give us exams on and quizzes sometimes. It's free and you just make an account and then your teacher will give you a code and you put the code into it's kind of hard sometimes I should do a walkthrough on that too because I was I, I it took me a while to figure out how to do that you have to go to um add content and then put I think it says like put add new class or something like that and you will put the code into ATI and then it will give you a whole thing for your class like health assessment has one and I think maternity and peds has one and I think MedSearch has one. I think Farm has one too, but I don't think Deco used to use it with us. For pharmacology, yeah, I think it's okay to use any edition because all of these textbooks be trying to play us. All of those textbooks be the same. I have never seen a textbook have a new edition and then the new edition be any different content-wise than the previous edition. All they do is change the picture on it and then scramble the chapters to make us feel like we're buying something new. Comment in the chat if you agree, if you're already in the um, program and you've seen that some of the books are just the same as the previous version. For, for um, Patho, I remember I had two editions back. Like they were, I think they were on like the eighth edition or something like that. And I think I was on like the sixth edition and it was the exact same, still got an A in the class. It's the exact same words. I, I actually took the book from somebody, like my classmate who was sitting next to me. I was like, oh, can I see your book? So I took the book and I looked through it, word for word, the same. And it's like almost always like that. If you could find a free PDF if from somebody who already took the class or something like that, like I used to have the PDFs, but I deleted them because they take up too much room on my laptop. But 
find somebody who just took the class or something like that to email you the PDF so you could save some money because you do have to pay for codes to do homework and things like that. And those codes be adding up. So I would save my money for stuff that you actually need in the program, like your uniform. Your uniform is going to run you some coins, too. If you um, do you guys have your uniforms already? Um, I'm not sure if you have to order them online. It's from Flynn or O'Hara. I'll write it here so you guys. I don't know if you guys know, but that's the um, that's the place for you to get your uniform. Let me give you guys the address, too, because I think I had got mine in person, but it didn't even make any sense for me to get it in person because when I did get it in person, all I did was try it on. And I'm thinking I'm going to, you know, they're going to give me the, the, the clothes one time. And they they were like, oh, it's going to ship to you in a couple in a couple of um, weeks. I was like. The whole point of me going to the store was to get the stuff one time. That's the address, y'all. So I would say just um, order it online. Everything fits pretty normal. I had got a small slash medium, but that was when I was smaller. So I would get a medium slash large now, <laughs> just for size reference. The bottoms do. Oh, yeah. The bottoms kind of run, run big, run a little big. I don't know. I'm kind of big on the bottom, so it's still going to fit me, but, you know best professors the only professor i would ever use the word best and professor in the same sentence is professor deco everybody else nah so you had to exchange it well it's okay they're gonna um they're gonna give you guys some slack you're not gonna have to use your like if the first day you don't have your uniform nobody's gonna like punish you for it not that i know of none of the professors i had was like I remember I had one professor for um, Farm Lab who was just like, I remember one person asked him, do you, we have to use uniform for Farm Lab? Because you are supposed to use the uniform for Farm Lab. And he was like, if it's important to you, you can use your uniform, but it's not important to me. And I was like, okay. So like people started we like, stop wearing their uniform for that class because it really doesn't make sense. Like you don't, in Farm Lab, you basically just doing med math. So you don't really need your uniform. Even for like health assessment lab, you really don't need your uniform. I get why you need your uniform for clinicals, but lab, you really don't. But the rule is that we're supposed to wear a uniform. But if you're going online, you do not have to use your uniform for anything. If you chose to do online um, classes this semester, you do not have to use your, um, you do not have to use your uniform. Most of the time, you don't even have to be on camera. But if you are on camera, don't violate and go under your covers in your bed. Because I know last semester, like, a lot of people was getting in trouble for that. Because they were, like, logging on Zoom and they were, like, under their covers. And I heard that some, even some professors were, like, in pajamas and teaching from their bed. Don't do that. <laughs> just wear regular. Just wear, even if you wear just a shirt and some. And whatever you got, you want to keep on your pajamas um, bottoms, then go for it. But just at least pretend and wear, like, a regular shirt. Do you guys have any more questions? Oh, I had a list of questions from one person. Let me get to those. Hold on, guys. My shirt fit like a dress on me. It was a medium. Oh, man. So now you have this. Do you have to send it back or do you go to the store? I'm not even sure. Let me see if I can get these list of questions. What? Oh, what did you? Oh, I missed a question. Sorry, y'all. What do you consider your hardest course? Hmm. Well, I only have three left. I have Med Search Two, Leadership, and Community. So I'm I'm thinking that Med Search Two is probably about to be my hardest course. But so far that I've actually taken. I would say, hmm. I would say patho because, yeah, patho was a little hard because it was just like the first semester. I didn't really know NCLEX style questions. I didn't know critical thinking and how they were at. It seemed like, because it seemed like they would teach me A, B, C, and then in the, in the, in the test, it would be like, what's, what's, XYZ, 
You know what I mean? Because they want you to connect things. Like in the, I don't even know how to explain it. It would be like, they would teach you something and say, you know, like a perfect example was like for maternity. Maternity in class, we would learn, you know, say we were learning about birth control. We would, sorry for the noise, guys. That's my son. Um, we would learn like about birth control and say um, we were learning about a diaphragm and the diaphragm needs to be refit when a woman gains weight. Right. So you would say, oh, I'm going to memorize that. Great. A diaphragm needs to be refit when you gain weight. And then on the test, you think you're going to get a question that's going to be like, oh, the person gained weight. No, the person just gave birth. So they want you to connect that they do need to get their diaphragm refit, but they're not going to say it how they taught it. You get what I'm saying? They're not going to flat out say X, Y and Z and then text, test you on X, Y, and Z. They're gonna say A, B, C, and then expect you to know, okay, A, B, C probably means X, Y, Z, and connect it to another, a whole other concept, to test you on the full concept and see if you really understood what they taught. So that's what was hard for me. Like the first semester, getting used to that style of questioning is so hard. It's just, it's, you can't get used to it until you actually go, go through the class. And like when you finish your first semester, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll just be like, wow. Because that first semester is so different than prereqs. Because prereqs, I remember I used to think I was so smart. And prereqs was so easy. I used to breeze through my prereqs. I barely used to study. I just used to pay attention in class, do a little reading here and there. And I used to get A's easily. But then nursing school man it was like a, a a truck hit me totally different um let's see let me go back so i don't if i miss any questions just put it again please i had to return the bottom so my first uh, uh. does anyone know if we're allowed to study in the library i mean if the campus is open i would think so i don't know if you want to study in the library if it's crowded but i think you should be able to if they open the campus i don't see why not there was a store there was a store around by the school that made shirts okay gotcha oh for the bottoms you don't have to get the bottoms from flynn o'hare o'hara whatever their name is you could get any bottoms that you want um i know a lot of people like to buy the cute ones from like fig you can do that if you want and get the like cute jogger style um bottoms it doesn't matter what bottoms you get once they're white and it doesn't matter what shoes you get once they don't have um any laces and once they're the right material you like you can't get sneaker material it has to be like nursing shoe material and i got nurse mates shoes for 30 bucks on flatbush and one of those hole in the wall shoes places but they're really like 80 dollars yeah any yeah let me show you guys i got the nurse mates dove work clog <laughs> they're so ugly <laughs> but they're so comfortable let me see if i can show you guys can you guys see that that's the shoe that I have. Super ugly. They're at DSW for $80. That's crazy. I don't know. I guess it's, I don't know if it's because I got it on Flatbush. It was cheaper, but I definitely did not pay $80 for them. Get those joints on Flatbush. <laughs> I'm nervous as heck with my schedule. Don't be nervous. You got this. I know a lot of people are not happy with their schedule. I have another friend who was saying that she has six, six um, school days straight. So she only has one day off. I kind of did anyone else get their ID that I'm not sure about. If you didn't, you would probably have to go on campus. And if you oh, if you don't have your ID, then go through the main entrance and just tell the security guard that you don't have your ID. But you you can't enter on um, you can't enter. There's a side entrance that has your um, it has turnstiles. So you have to tap your ID to open it. You can't go through there. Enter the building. Um, the front of the building so that you can talk to the security guard. That will, um, ooh, what is the name of that? I think on Flatbush, there's two entrances. So the one with the, the thing that says like the arch, you can go to that one or the inside the building. They should be, they'll know you don't have your ID. Mm -mm, students must be followed. The track that they, yeah. So now the track is what the track is. Like before there was like a part-time track where you could take a little bit less classes than full-time. 
and it was a lot easier. That's what I did. This semester, I'm full-time because I'm taking med surge to leadership and community. But before, you used to be able to be part-time. Now, it's full-time or nothing. So um, I'm going to... I'm going to type that um, picture that I just showed you guys of all the of all the classes and what the track is now. That's the updated one. It's a paper that looks like this. You should get that from your advisor. You could probably email um, the associate. I hope you guys could see that. You could probably email. Let's see. Could you guys see that? It's a paper that looks like that, like semester one, semester two, blah, blah, blah. So you can probably email your advisor, whatever it says on your MyLIU, whoever your advisor is, it's probably Pia Haynes. Just email her and she will probably send you a PDF of it so that you can see what your track is. But everybody's track is the same. Farm, farm Health Assessment, Patho, Contemporary Topics, and Informatics. Whew, that is so much. I don't know how they expect us to do well with all those classes. If you... um. If you work full time and your job is not compliant to you being in nursing school, I wish you luck. If you can't, if you don't have a job where you can study, it's going to be a lot. You have, you're going to, if you work, you're going to have to study at work. Because farm, patho, and health assessment is going to be back to back to back, test, 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 quiz, 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 back to back to back. Where have you done your clinicals? I did. My first clinicals, e like years ago, years and years and years ago, when I was first in program, um, the geriatrics clinical, I think they said that that's offensive. So they changed that name to, I think they call it now something else. Um, I think that's what they incorporated, incorporated in health in fundamentals, I think. But before it was called caring for the older adult. And we went to a nursing home um, around the corner from Kings County. And that was a pretty okay experience. I didn't, um, I think we, I don't know. I think it was okay. I, I feel like I, I did as much as I could for a nursing home because everybody was kind of, you know, this is their home. They have their routine. They got the same medicines every day. They got, you know, I got to give insulin. The coolest thing was probably um, giving medications through like this, um, I forgot what you call it through their like directly to their stomach and you have to like crush the pills and like flush it and use your set scope to hear the water and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. And then giving insulin was pretty cool. And then my, my professor, she's not in the, she doesn't teach anymore, but she let us do a lot. Like she let us literally pass medications and yeah, I don't know if that was a good idea or not, because I'm not going to lie. One of my, um, one of my classmates, made a huge mistake there. But anyway, so she used to let make us, she used to let us give med, she would give us the paper and like, it was all pills. So we would just like take the med cart and look at the name. Oh, this person is getting X, Y, and Z. So you will pull out X, Y, and Z, put it in a cup, give it to them, let them swallow it, stuff like that. Like um, simple stuff like that. So that was cool. And then I had um, for psych clinicals, I did not have clinicals for psych. Um, we were supposed to go to Lincoln and then COVID happened. So we didn't end up going to psych clinicals and then maternity. Um, I did that at Maimonides and I didn't really, that was not a good experience because not to, not to get in trouble. So I got to watch how I say this, but it was kind of like the, I think I said this in my peds video too. So like basically the nurses there were not receptive to us. That's the best way I could say it. They didn't really like us at all. They wanted, they didn't seem to, want to teach us anything they didn't really they didn't just, just didn't care for us like so we felt like we were bothering them and we would literally just stand there hoping for someone to show us something and then my professor didn't work there so she didn't have access to the computers so basically like we wouldn't really we would basically just be learning not hands-on we would be le learning background stuff because and then it was crazy because there was another school that was there and their professor actually works at the hospital. So they got to go on the computers. They got to write care plans, like real care plans based on their real charts. And they got so much more experience like the, and I don't even, I don't want to pull like the whole racism thing, but I'm not going to front. We were minorities and that school was not minorities. So it was just a, a real coincidence that like their, the other school 
was getting to do everything. And then it was always like an issue because when we get there, they would already be there. And then it would be like, well, okay, there's not enough patience for all you guys to have patients, but they would get priority and they would get patients and we would not. So a lot of times we would go there and nothing would happen. It was horrible. So yeah, I definitely, I, I'm, I was, and mind you, Mind you, I don't know if you guys know, but I love maternity. Like I was looking for it. You can even see if you follow me on Instagram, when I, the day I registered for maternity, I was jumping up and down. Cause I was like, yes, I love maternity. I can't wait to see, um, you know, uh, a woman give birth, blah, 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 blah. Cause you know, I I've given birth. I have a son, but that's a different experience than watching it happen. You know what I mean? Like, I don't remember giving like I remember giving birth but obviously I didn't see what it looked like and like see the nursing aspect of it and what was going on around me I was too busy like trying not to die you know what I mean so yeah it was it was not really a good experience for me personally with maternity and that's one of the reasons I had chose to also go online this semester because I haven't had good experiences with clinicals and I don't even it's not even a guarantee that we're going to get clinical sites anyway Let's see. Did you take Zabala? No, I had health assessment when um, she was on maternity leave. So I had Professor Payne. Yeah, I, did you take Professor Payne? Yes, I did. Um, where have you done your clinical? So basically Maimonides, Kingsbrook, Psych, I didn't have um, clinicals. And that's it. Then we went online because of COVID. I need all your notes from OBMPs, girl. My notes would probably not even help you. That's to tell you how OBMPs is about to go for y'all. That's how OBMP, OBMPs, especially OB, pay attention in class because whatever she says is what she's gonna, what she, whatever she stresses is gonna be on the exam. Like, and she might not stress the same things that she stressed with us. So I don't even think my notes, my notes will help, but I could send you like the blueprints filled out. Just um, DM me on Instagram. Um, if you guys want pronto assistance, contact Ann Leary. She's really awesome. Yep. When did you take principal of nursing? So when I took principal of nursing, I don't know if I, if um, everybody knows this, but when I first got into the program, it was like 2000. Let me check before I lie on myself. It was a long time ago. So when I first got into the program, all of this, the tracks, Everything was completely different. The names of the courses were different. And then I had um, failed patho and farm. And then I got dismissed out of the program because you guys know you cannot fail two classes at, um, at all. So then I went to health science because they told me to just do health science and because I'm only a couple, only a semester away from health science because like the requirements are kind of the same. Worst advice ever. So I went to do health science. So now I have a bachelor's degree in health science. That's completely useless to me. And then um, um, they changed deans. And then my friend had texted me and he said that they um, that I should appeal and try to get back in because somebody because the dean is like nicer or whatever. So I wrote this letter of appeal and then I got back in. So I had to take Path on Farm. But this is like a couple years later. So the program had completely changed. So when I first started. I, um, it wasn't even called principles of nursing. I think, let me check. I'm about to look at my, um, transcript. Cause I don't even remember. Cause it was so long ago, but it was just, um, it was a bad move for me to go do health science. I should have just did nothing so that I could still get more financial aid because now, because it's a second degree, I get less financial aid. So just a future reference. I hope you guys don't need it and you never fail classes, but if they do tell you to do health science, I would, I would not. I think it would have been smarter if I just went to um, Wagner, but Wagner is expensive too, so I don't know. Wagner is expensive too, but Wagner has a second degree program that, um, or and a, and a, what you call it, a second degree accelerated program and a regular full-time program. And I think they would have took, they took me into the accelerated program. So I would imagine that they would have taken me into their regular program too. So that would have been to me smarter and just go there and do over whatever classes that, you know, I had to do. I would have to start from scratch, though. Like you wouldn't get to you wouldn't get to what you call it to continue. You would have to start over. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So see, it was 2000. 
14, no, 2004, yeah, fall 2014 is when I first took my first um, nursing courses. I took Patho, Farm Principles of Medication, which is now Farm Lab. I took Nursing Foundations and Nursing 2, whatever that is. Horrible, horrible. Look at my grades, y'all. Did y'all see that? Terrible, them two Cs. Oh, man, but then I came back. I hope y'all can see that. And I came back and got A's. And I've been pretty much getting A's in, ever since, but I got to be in um, informatics, of course. And then I got to be in, um, I got to be in health assessment. But it does not matter, y'all. Just pass. Just pass. <laughs> Please just pass. Um... Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hell no. I probably want to went off. Can you please tell me the school supplies you have? So I was fil I filmed the whole school supply haul and I deleted it by mistake because I couldn't upload it because I didn't have room for it. So now I have to figure out how to re-edit that whole video. But basically, my school supplies is very, very, very short. Like I, my school supplies is literally like just the uniform. If you're if you're going in person, and if you're not going on in person, you just need a planner, a plain calculator, and maybe a notebook. And that's if you even want a notebook. Because personally, I think it's better. And you guys could see that in my how to study for farm video. You can see that in my how to study for farm video, um, where I just print out the slides with three slides per page so that the lines come up next to the slide. Let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about. But I just print it out like that and I take notes on the slides. That's much better than taking notes in the notebook and then flipping back from the notebook to the slides. To me, it's much easier to just have the slides right next to your notes. And then maybe some folders. I wouldn't even, you don't even need folders if you're going online. But if you're going in person and you're gonna have a, a whole bunch of um, uh, folders then I would say get the folders. But if you want to save some coins, you could get these from um, you could get these from Target. They're fifty cents. I got a pink one and a purple one. Boom. So this, I guess, this could be my little school supply haul. I got a cute little pen. Don't mind the thread. Dollar Tree. I got two planners. My friend Amakali gave me this planner, and then I have another planner from Lily Pulitzer. Um, you definitely need a planner because it gets overwhelming when like things are due every single week back to back to back. Get you a plain calculator, especially if you're going online because um, did I speak about respondents yet? No, I don't think I did. So if you're going online, some of you guys are going online, you're going to be using lockdown respondents browser. You might as well just download that now because that's how you're going to be taking tests. Let me put it in. That sounded wrong. <laughs> browser. Um, yeah, that's the thing you need to download because basically before you take the test, it's going to ask you to, you're going to have to literally like pick up the laptop and show your whole surroundings, go like that. And then oh, I'm about to mess up my light. And then like show your environmental check. It'll ask you to do an audio check. So you'll just go like A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And then you take a picture, you get your ID, you get your ID, hold your ID up like this, take a picture. Um, and then you start the test. And while you're taking the test, it's going to be recording you. Like the screen is recording you right now. It's going to be um, recording the screen to see like what you're typing or like what you click in, where the mouse is going. All, I think all of that is being recorded too. And then the audio. And then um, during the, audio, the environmental check, you have to show if there's a math question and they're allowing you to use a piece of paper before, during the environmental check, you have to just like hold up the blank, blank piece of paper and then hold up your calculator. And then before the test, remember it's recording you the whole time. So say you on the last question, you just hold up the scrap paper again and show your work and then you just click off. So you definitely need, go to Dollar Tree, get you a dollar cheap calculator cause you can't use all those fancy calculators anyway. So you definitely need one of those. I would say a stethoscope. I don't know where my stethoscope is but you can see it on Instagram if you're curious. It's a peach colored, um, Litman. A lot of people use Litmans because they're they're really good quality. I had mine since 2014, and it's still perfect as ever. Like I hear everything on that thing. I've never had any issues hearing. Like I can literally hear when the blood goes back into the vest. Like when you're taking um blood pressure, and like you could literally hear the jump. So it's really really good. I love it. Um, that's about it. Honestly, you need a maybe some pens. My favorite pens. Yes, Holly. 
What? You playing with your car? Yeah. Okay. So these are my favorite. This is how I just keep my pens right here. These are my favorite, favorite pens. Let me know what your favorite pens are. Um, somebody was telling me, my, my brother-in-law actually was telling me to go to Muji because I, I love stationery. And he was telling me to go to Muji because I like these gel pens. These are the Paper Mink Ink, ink Joy. They just write so good. Like, let me write something because I just love these pens. How much are the planners? Um, they're kind of expensive. That um, I'm not sure how the one, the first, the marbly one, this one, my friend gave me this one, so I don't know um, how much this one is, but this one, how much was this planner blade? Like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. It was a lot. I don't remember. Um, this is a medium Lily Pulitzer. I think it was like 50 or 40 bucks. I want to say, but it's super cute. Comes with these cute little, oops. I just put my whole address. I'm gonna have to <laughs> blur that out on the playback. They're super cute. I'm trying to put, y'all trying to get me in trouble here. Can't be having your address on. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of like YouTubers getting stalked or like people showing up at YouTubers jobs and stuff like that. I'm not that big of a YouTuber yet, but one day I don't want anybody to have my address. So let me show you guys this, how, how nicely this pen writes. How cute is that? Look at how nice it writes. And it doesn't really smear as much as a as much as a, look, it doesn't smear as a gel pen, but it writes as a gel pen, super cute. Okay, how much were the planners? I need a desk for home. You know where I can get a good one? I actually just saw a desk that I kind of wanted. It's not like a desk desk. This is just my dining table. I'm in the living room. So that's what I use, cause I don't have um, room for like a whole nother desk setup. My bedroom is small. So I would say, um, I was about to get, me personally, get a um, a lap desk from Amazon because there's these cute ones that's like 40 bucks and you could just be on the couch or the bed because, you know, like not all the time you're going to want to sit at the desk for class. You don't have to sit at the desk in class. You can you can take your, um, I think I put that in my video on how tips on surviving online school too. You can take your um, laptop, use your phone as a hotspot and then go to the park. Like while it's still hot, please like go to go to the park go outside be outside as much as you can like of course be careful and you know wear your mask and stuff like that but you can go to class in the park you can go to class in front of your house you can be in the backyard you can be wherever if you're going online you know what I mean so I found that like this whole um, COVID situation got me like tired of being indoors a lot of the times especially when I when we first went online I was like losing my mind, like just sitting in this exact same spot for every single class back to back to back. So it's really helpful to just sometimes go other places. Like, so if you have a lap, a lap um, desk, you can take that if you want, it folds up flat. You can take that to, you know, the couch, the front of the building, front of your house, whatever. So I would get one of those. If not, if you want like a desk desk, um, I would check Ikea. Even though I had a bad experience with them over COVID, I had ordered like a bunch of stuff for my son and it literally took like three months to get here. I was so furious, but yeah. So when did I take principal of nursing in 2014? Cause I'm a dinosaur. Um, oh, I don't know what to buy. I have a small binder and that's all. Do not buy a lot of stuff, girl. You do not need that much stuff. Especially if it's, if it's LIU we're talking about you're going to have a lot of other things to buy. So save your coins for that. You just need like a printer. That would be really good. If you're not going on campus, you might need a printer because you might need to print out the slides. If you're like a person who needs to write stuff down to understand it, like I am, I'm kind of a visual person. So it helps me to print the slides out. But if you're not, and you can just be okay with your laptop, you could take notes on the lecture slides from PowerPoint. So you really don't need to get notebooks either. You might just need... Yeah, if you're going online, you really don't need any paper at all. You can take your notes on the lecture slides and you're going to take your tests on the lecture slides. I mean, on the computer, too. So really, you don't need much else. I wouldn't overdo the I like I know I see you guys probably see like a lot of um, hauls and school supplies hauls on um, YouTube. But a lot of them are excessive. Every time I watch those, I, I just crack up because it's just so much ex excessive, unnecessary stuff. Like, it's just so unnecessary. It worked full time. Hell to the no. <laughs> That's my fiance, y'all. He knows you can't work full time with this program.
and go to school full time is hard. You can. I know some people who can because their job is understanding and they get to study and take a lot of breaks at their job and their job is kind of laid back. But I have not had such luck with jobs to have a job that's like laid back. Do you know where I can print everything for free? You can print everything for free at the school. They give you a certain amount, an allowance. I'm not sure how much it is. It's probably like 50 bucks. I think it's like 50 bucks is on your ID card. So when you go on campus to school, you just swipe the, you'll have to get, go to the library and understand what I'm saying. But basically like you will send it to the printer and you log on with your LIU um, account and then it sends it to the printer and then you swipe it, swipe your card on the printer and then it will print out from there. Yeah. Yes, they do it for the aesthetic. Yes, they definitely do. I know they do not use half of that. I was like, should I do a haul? Like my haul is gonna be so whack and dry compared to these other YouTubers' hauls because their hauls just be having like these fancy clipboards for um for clinicals that have like all the you know little hacks and like vital sign stuff and never in my life have I ever like oh no. Do you think it's possible to work full time during the program? It depends on what job. Now, this is coming from somebody who did work full time and I did have a full time schedule. Sorry, y'all. I did have a full time schedule my first semester in 2014 and I showed y'all my grades. You saw them two C's that cost me my life. Like, so I personally always tell people if you can, especially if you have parents that care about you and will help you out mooch off your parents as long as you can don't go to work don't just chill at home especially if you have parents who are not going to make you pay bills and you don't live on your own mooch off your parents and just focus on school there's no point in slaving for these jobs that are not going to serve you after you graduate if it's like a nurse assistant job or something like that that you want to keep because after you graduate you're going to get a nursing job from that job then fine they should be understanding to know that nursing school is demanding and give you a good part-time schedule that works with your school schedule so it is possible it just depends on what kind of job you do okay let me go back to instagram if you guys have any more questions put them in the chat i had a list of questions from one person i'm going to find from instagram because she asked really good questions i get like literally tons of questions every single week from um from LIU students. And I totally understand because I used to do this, I used to have so many questions and like be so confused. If you haven't already, please like this video if it's helpful to you and subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified. And let me know if I should do this next week and like continue this whole thing because I think it's helpful. So let me know in the chat if you guys would be into doing this like as a weekly thing so that everybody could get to know each other and stuff. Because I think it's going to be a little harder to me. It's a little harder to get to know people online because you can. Oh, and that's a tip, I guess, too. If you're on if you're going online and you still, you know, want to make friends and stuff, you can um, message people on Zoom. And you can, you know, like on the first day, your teacher might like have everybody introduce themselves or something like that, or they might not. And they might just start off with a lecture, but you could still just hit people up through Zoom, even if you don't know them and just be like, hey, like, how do you want to get together and study for this class or whatever, stuff like that. You could still make an effort and talk to people, even if you're going online. And if you're going in person, definitely make friends as much as you can. I cannot stress how, how like having your crew is so important. Do the professors understand or they don't, they just don't care? Some do, some don't. Yeah, some do, some don't. In my experience, it's been like 50-50. Some professors are super understanding to the struggle and then others are just like, they think that, you know, their class is the only class that you have and they just gonna like go ham. And then other teachers are like, I know you have other classes, so I'm gonna, you know, they'll even extend deadlines sometimes and stuff like that. But most of the time, they just know like nursing school is hard and they just like, they think that they're preparing you for the future. So they think that like, you should just learn how to time manage and learn how to, you know, do all these classes at once. And then, yeah, they're just like, not as understanding. 
I can't find the rest of these questions. I hope you guys do really well this semester, though, for real. I know it's a lot with everything going on. And I think it's, it's probably really unorganized. And I heard that the orientation left you guys confused. So that's why I did this whole um, live stream. So I hope it was helpful. Um, were you ever nervous about how you'll pay? Was I? Man, my bill right now is $37,000. So let me, so tell me if you think I'm nervous. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. Some miracle from God has to happen for me to graduate because you're, you're um, I don't know if you guys know this, but your bill has to be zero dollars for registrar to um, release your transcripts and for you to get your degree. So let me know how that's going to work out. I don't know. I really have no idea. Yeah, I had to I just, I'm super nervous about that bill. Um, LIU was super expensive. If you, if you, um, if you're a first student, you should get like scholarships and grants and stuff like that, but it's just a really expensive school. But you, you kind of like get what you pay for because, because it's so expensive, they do have more, I find that they do have more sections of courses than compared to other schools, like other schools. And let me know if you guys know anybody in other schools, but I know my sister is in LPN school and her school is like, you know, farm, you have to take farm this semester. You could take it on Monday, you could take it on Wednesday. If you can't take it on Monday, you can't take it on Wednesday, then too bad. In LIU, you pretty much could usually 90% 90, 90 of the time you can make your schedule how you want your schedule, you know? So that's, that comes at a cost because they have to pay, you know, professors that coin and professor coin is a lot. So you kind of, you know, I wasn't given the option to choose online or a person. So if you want to go online, you have to contact. If you see in the LIU emails, they'll say, um, if you, what does it say exactly? I'll tell you right now. It says, if you need accommodations to contact this person, um, you would have to con contact um, Promise. And I will put that in the, are you um, asking because you want to do, in online, I'll tell you who you got to contact right now. If you want to go online, if anybody could get it before me, then um, help her out. Um, actually, let me give you the phone number. 212. Which one is it? Not 212. I think it's 215 or something weird like that. Where is it? Or is it 516? No, it's 516. Okay. It's called its office and just tell them that you want accommodations to go online. 299-3737. I don't know if I should be putting their full name and blast <laughs> on this video. I don't want to get in trouble, but that's the phone number to the office you have to call. So you just contact them and tell them that you want to go in person. And because, you know whatever reason you have if you have like an immunocompromised person in your household and you don't want to commute because of the pandemic and things like that you can just tell them that they will let you know and they'll most likely just email you back or call you back and tell you you know that your accommodation has been approved so basically um the professors are going to be in person on campus and they're just going to log on zoom while they're actually teaching in the classroom works same thing I know in Adelphi, they have way too many classes for the program, but in LIU, there's only 14. What do you mean they have too many classes for the program? Like, you mean like they have more classes than us? Like actual, um, like maybe farm part two or something like that. They add on extra stuff. Yikes. What do you recommend more than taking out a loan or setting up a payment plan? I think the setting, setting up with the payment plan is the best because that's going to help you. That's going to, that's going to, in the long run, be better. If you can afford the payment plan, do the payment plan because the loan is going to cost you more in the future and it really piles up. At, but the good part is that nursing um, is one of those professions that get back a lot of those loans. So a lot of hospitals pay back um, your loans. Mm. So other than that, 
I would say scholarships, but I've really never had luck with scholarships. Like I've applied for so to so many scholarships, but my friend did tell me that because of COVID, there are more scholarships out there. So we just have to dig and look around. I think that's what I'm going to spend a lot of my free time doing because my bill is $37,000 because it's three semesters in one because I have a balance from, I had a balance from last spring and then I took summer classes and then now the fall is on there too. So it's a lot. It's a, it's a large, it's definitely a large. Can you tell me who I can talk to in regards of, in regards to financial aid slash loans? Um, hold on. The financial aid office, you want to speak to the head of the financial aid department is, um, I forgot his name. Hold on. I'll tell you right now. You could also talk to, um, the associate dean, which is Pia, Pia Haynes. You can talk to her about um, financial aid too, but for financial aid, you can call Dean Slumber. Most likely they're gonna have like, they're gonna pick up and it's it might be a student who picks up and then you have to tell them like what you want and then they'll call you back. You usually don't get to speak to an advisor right away, but you can call that number and speak to um, financial aid. Financial aid is enrollment and enrollment and financial aid is like the same thing. It's basically like they merged registrar, registrar and financial aid into one department. So it's called enrollment now. I don't think online is harder. I, I think online is easier because I get to multitask. You, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a son, a two year old. So it's, easy for, it's easier for me to just log on like and put the lecture loud. And then like sometimes we doing other things and still be listening, it's, it seems to be easier to me. Online is, is definitely easier now that I'm used to it. But at first it was a little intimidating, I'm not gonna front. Cause like the lockdown browser, you feel like someone's watching, literally someone is watching you, but you feel it. Like you feel like someone is like breathing down your neck, but then you get used to it. Um, how did you go about making your schedule to study? How many hours per week do you set aside to study? So basically how I do it is that when, as soon as I get the syllabus, I will write down every single exam. So look, if like if I have an exam on this Wednesday, I will write patho exam over here and then I will go back one week and then I would write right here. I would write start studying for patho exam, patho exams next week. And then I would just do that for all the quizzes and all the, all the, what do you call it? I would basically like write out my whole schedule. I would write like, okay, you have patho at six, you have patho the next, you have farm the next day, blah, 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 blah. But I would write down when I have the exams and then write a week before start studying for that exam. So that when I see it that week, I'll like look at that week and say, okay, I have a break from, you know, I have a break for this hour. At this hour, I'm going to start studying for farm at this at, or like a week before that I'll be like oh start making the concept map for farm and then I'll be like you know oh we're doing this chapter on Wednesday Tuesday read that chapter before the class so I'll just map it out like that some you'll you'll get a feel for it when you actually go through the class when you, and you'll get like a feel for which classes you have to study more for and which classes you kind of like just show but you'll, you'll get that feel after the first exam, like usually, or the first quiz, whichever one comes first, you'll get a feel of like how the professor tests you and, you know, what you could do better on and so forth, so on and so on. Like you'll, you'll figure it out as it goes. It's kind of hard to say like how many hours per class, because it really depends. Some classes I didn't study for at all, like, you know, because they don't have tests, like contemporary topics is mostly like a writing class. I didn't study for that class. I just did homework. I work full time and I have two kids, but my wife helps me a lot out a lot so I can get time, some studying done at night. Yeah, I definitely feel you on that. My fiance helps me out so much. If it is really a team effort, like I, when I get, um, when I graduate, I will literally like half of that degree is his because I could not do it without him at all. Because if when you, especially when you have um, kids, it's really hard to study around kids. You have to like work it around their nap time and like wait till they're asleep because it's like it, it's impossible it's really impossible to study like it, it depends on what age the child is of course but my son is two so yeah <laughs> kind of hard to study with him but that's that's why I like studying online too because I kind of learn like now my fiance comes home from work and then like 
if I have class, he'll take him, you know, wherever, or like he'll take care of him here and I could just focus on the computer. But worst case scenario, if he has to stay late, I could still take care of him. Like if it's that I have to go to class, imagine me taking a two year old on campus. You know what I mean? Like I remember I missed some classes because like I got stuck, um, I had to stay home. So that won't happen with being online. How old are your kids, by the way? Um, taking 20 classes without working would be fine. 20 credits? Hmm. Yeah, in theory, which it depends on what the 20 credits are. Let me, let me know what, um, what the 20 credits are. That will give me a better idea of how to answer that. Um, yeah, the actual classes in the program have, is a lot. They have part twos and a bunch of other classes that you don't really need for the future. That's such a money thing. It's so, all about money. The more classes they have, the more they can charge you. They have the geriatrics, the one with the old people, still in the Delphi program if you check that. Wow, that's, that's surprising. How do you manage? Yeah, that would be good. Give them some tips on how to manage working full time. It depends on your job, if they allow you to have free time to study or leave early and go home, definitely. Yeah, I know a lot of people who have jobs where they, um, like I met one person who has a job where she takes care of old, old uh, older couple and like she basically just like does their um, groceries and things like that. And that's an easy, not an easy job, but that's easy to study with because, you know, if you're mostly just there to keep them company or a companion, when you're also keeping them company, you could be, you know, studying. Also, I used to, um, well, I still do. I freelance as a sleep trainer or like a baby nurse. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's basically someone who takes care of newborns when they come home from the hospital. And basically, um, I would be there overnight while the mom gets, the mom and the dad gets to sleep. So that's kind of a good, it's good and bad because I, I really be tired, like, because it's usually 10 hour shifts. It's actually really 12 hour shifts, but I'd be negotiating my way back down to 10 hour shifts. But while the baby is sleeping, I could be on my phone studying or like I can't really be with a textbook. So that's why I don't really do that too many of those kind of jobs. I just do some sleep train the baby. And in a couple months, I just like leave or sometimes I'll work with my mom and we'll do um, rotating shifts like she'll do um, three days and I'll do three days like that. So it works out a little bit better. But jobs like that where you can study is totally fine. But it really depends on what classes you take in and what your schedule would be like and who's going to support you, you know. Oh, my son is six and my daughter is three. How cute. Good. So you're almost out of diapers, hopefully. You should be out of diapers. Lucky you. I can't wait to um, potty train my son. No more diapers. I was thinking of taking, okay, hold on. Let me look at what those numbers mean. You were thinking about taking, okay, 210, all right. Contemporary topics, that's easy. 211, informatics, tedious, but easy. That's just, a, informatics is more like being on top of, especially if you have Professor Olga, that's more like being on top of um, what's due and when it's due. Because when I tell you, if it's due, at 517 and you try to give it in at 518 you're not getting anywhere she's not going to take it so that's more like it's more about like being on top of deadlines and getting things done there's like a group project to like making sure that you keep up with the deadlines because if you do everything on time then you'll pass informatics but if you start missing things and forgetting because it's easy to like forget about informatics because you kind of worried about like the bigger classes but yeah, you got to you got to write everything down in your planner because you might not even get a reminder. You know what I mean? It might just be like you pop up to class one day and it's like, oh, hand in this. And you are like, what? Hand in what? <laughs> so that's more like that's more what informatics is about. Um, what else you said to 20 health assessment, a lot of work for health assessment. Um, 330. Yeah, a lot of work for patho. Not a lot of work, but, you know, like a lot of reading and time. 340 and 363. Hmm, 363 is, um, who do you have for 363? You could survive on that based on if you have a certain somebody for 363. I don't wanna put her on blast and say her name and get her in trouble. 
but yeah. Um, I work overnights, usually have at least three hours of downtime. See, if you work a job like that, you should be set. Three hours of downtime, you could study a lot in three hours. If you really focus and you, um, you know, Olga is the only one open for informatics now. I am not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. She has quite the reputation. Reputation, yeah. Yep. Do you recommend a binder versus a five subject book? Mm, I like to make concept maps like you guys probably saw in the how to how to study for a farm finals, farms final video. So I would prefer to actually just do folders, not notebooks, because I like to take notes on the let me show you on that slide. When you go file print and then you press um, slides and then you press three slides per page, it comes out like this. Can you guys see that? So the slide will be right there. It'll have those lines next to it. So you, especially for a farm, I used to love doing this because I, once I started doing this, I, I started doing way better in farm. So I just print it out like this and then I, you know, staple it and I put it in the folder. I didn't really like having binder. I didn't really like having a binder or a notebook. I'd rather just write it right on the slides and just put it in my folder. By the way, um, Target still has those folds for 50 cents I checked. Um, now I'm scared to even look that professor's way. Not only scared, just do what you gotta do. Like don't don't let her intimidate you. Just um make sure from day one, she probably put up the slides already. So check Blackboard. I mean, not the slides, the syllabus. Check Blackboard. If she put up the syllabus already, write down everything that's due and when it's due. If it says when it's due there, write that down immediately. And if she says something in class that's due, write it down in your planner immediately so you will not forget when it's due and then just map out when you're going to finish whatever that whatever assignment that's going to be or whatever quiz. Just map everything out. It's all about time management. So don't be scared, but just be ready. <laughs> How many hours do you study a day? Well, right now I'm free as a bird because school hasn't started yet. But when school starts um, September 8th, I'll be taking Med Surge 2, Leadership and Community. So from what I hear, I'm, mo I'm mostly probably all like, ugh. most of my energy will probably be going to Med Surge 2. So I would probably say i will be studying probably like three hours a week. Because at this point, like, um, you'll see after you finish the, for a couple semesters, you kind of go on autopilot, and a lot of the information is getting repeated. So you kind of, like, know more or less how to study smarter and not harder, if that makes sense. So I don't see myself, like, leadership and community, I think, is mostly assignments, and then MedSearch 2 is mostly exams. So, And then, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but um community no leadership clinicals is incorporated in med surge two clinicals so leadership you literally just have lecture and community you have lecture and lab let me see if i say that right if i said that right i think i did let me double check yeah so community is just lecture and clinical but leadership clinical is not um, I think it's just incorporated in med search too. Even though it says it there, it'll just always say like TBA because it's not a class you have to go to. So yeah, I'll have med search two lab clinical lecture, community clinical lecture, and leadership lecture. So most of my energy would probably be going to med search two because the lecture is going to have exams, the lab is going to have homework, the clinical is going to have care plans. And then for community, it's going to be assignments. Leadership's probably going to be papers. So not too much studying, mostly just for med search too. I really thought we were supposed to take informatics the second semester. Let's check. I think you're supposed to take. I think they changed it. Um, I took um, informatics my second semester too, but they they have a new track now. So yep, you take it in the first semester. If you guys want, I'll write down all of the classes, like the track. I'll write it down because I have this paper someone sent me um, of how it goes. This paper that looks like this. Of how it goes for each semester. You guys should have this paper. I'm pretty sure you could email Pia Haynes and get this PDF. But 
until then, I'll just write it in the description box so you guys know what, what classes you're taking at what semesters. Same girl, me too. Now they emailed me this morning saying I have to take informatics this semester for the fall and I'm trying to find a way to fit it into my schedule because I work as well. Well, if you can't take it, informatics is not a prereq for anything that I know of. So ask them if, if there's absolutely no way that you can take it, just email them and tell them there's absolutely no way that I can take it. And they'll, they might be able to let you take it next semester because just ask them if it's a prereq for, unless they change anything, but to my knowledge, it's not a prereq for anything. So you should be able to take it next semester. So just see if you can finesse that. Because if you can't take it, I mean, worst case scenario, they're going to tell you that it is a prereq for something. And then next semester, you have to take just informatics. You don't want that. But that would be worst case scenario. So her class has no exam, just quizzes? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. But because when I did take her, I had um, I didn't have any quizzes or exams. But I remember at the end of the semester, she was like, Oh, you guys are not, um, you guys are not reading. I can tell like, cause we weren't really participating in class. <laughs> and, and then she was like, um, I know you guys are not doing the reading. And, you know, like someone explained to her, like, you know, we have other classes, like we doing a lot of reading. We have reading for patho. We have reading for farm. We have reading for health assessment. We have like a lot of reading. So yeah, sometimes we don't do the reading. So um, she was like, you know what? Well, you know what? I'm going to put quizzes for next semester and that semester can thank you guys. And I was just like, <laughs> so I guess now you have quizzes. Double check, go on um, Blackboard, go to content, click informatics. I mean, go to Blackboard, click informatics, click content, see her syllabus and see if, um, if there's any quizzes. I think most likely there will be because she warned us about that. Did any YouTube videos help you? If so, who would you recommend? I heard n re Registered Nurse RN is good. Yeah, Registered Nurse RN is good. Um, for farm, shameless plug, my video is the best because it's actually for us in this school. So I would say that video. But other than that, um, I don't remember using any videos except for far for patho. I had watched a YouTube video on like cardiac because uh, I said before, like I'm really not good with cardiac. I have no desire to be a cardiac nurse. So and cardiac is just not interesting to me. So it's hard for me to like read through that dr very dry tractor. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was hard for me to do cardiac. So I had to YouTube like a video explaining how blood flows through the heart and how to memorize like all the valves and ventricles and stuff like that. So little videos like that kind of help, but <laughs> Tanya's class messing it up for everyone. <laughs> no, we really did. We really did because we were so over it. Like we had so much else to do and then it was just, it just seemed so tedious and like unnecessary. You know what I mean? Like I understand when classes are hard because you know, that's things that we have to know in real life. But if you're not becoming an informatics nurse, it was not really relevant. So I was just like, the whole class was just like, all the, the whole, like the whole hour or two hours. I, no, actually, I think that class was like three hours. Man, like a lot of people used to be like studying and doing other things in the class. So she, she got mad. Yeah, so... Yeah, my class definitely messed it up for everyone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You'll be fine, though. It's informatics. It can't get much harder. It's my final semester. Congratulations. It's mine, too. Last semester. And I pushed off informatics until this semester. See? There you go. So if you can't fit informatics into your um, semester, who was it, N? Yeah, and if you cannot fit informatics, I don't think you should worry about it. Just tell them that you cannot do it. Because look here, we have someone who has taken informatics in the last semester. Yeah. They're kind of funny about the tracks. Like, I don't know what it is about, like, following the exact track. Because a lot of the times, it's not even necessary for the next course. You know what I mean? Like, um, there was something else I had. I think that I wasn't allowed to take med surge one before at the same time as health assessment and now that I've taken med surge one I could have took it with health assessment it was not like 
oh my gosh, health assessment taught me so much that I would not have been able to understand med surge. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that at all. So would you recommend us newbies to push informatics off? Yeah, informatics is not, um, you could take informatics any anytime, in my opinion. Informatics is not something that's gonna apply to other courses. Informatics is not gonna affect your learning other, like your being able to pass other courses at all. Informatics is a totally different, a totally different, field like it's informatics it's about computers and stuff like it's not like farm that applies like I wouldn't recommend putting farm away putting farm for another semester I understand why farm is a prereq because in order for you to like understand health assessment it's helpful to understand I mean and med surge it's helpful for you to have farm and patho on your belt like those kind of courses make sense to take in the order but classes like contemporary topics informatics, research, um, classes like that, I, you don't really have to take them exactly when the track says, in my opinion. But again, it's really up to them. They make the track. They say what we have to take. We have to follow the track. So if you can push informatics off, it's not going to be detrimental. If they, let you if they let you push it off, I would push it off. Definitely. Because it's tedious. It would be less homework for you to do. So you can focus more on patho and farm and health assessment, which are the hard classes. I'm about to do the same as Pia. Don't overtell me into a better professor. Leave it until the end. Yeah, if you allow, if you ask and you say like there's no way to for you to take it, I think she should allow you to. Almost every course has scheduled one day a week. Yeah, most of them have more than one day a week because most of the classes is broken down into um, lecture, lab, and clinical or just lecture and lab. So most of them have, you mostly meet like two or three times a week. Right now I have seven classes. That's a lot. That's really a lot. What classes do you recommend to bring your GPA up before nursing school? Mm. I think the prereqs that like you're supposed to take, you can do well in those. I wouldn't really recommend taking classes just to bring your GPA up because it's expensive. If you're going to like a CUNY beforehand and like the courses are free, then sure, I would say like take easy classes like, you know, English 101 or like, you know, just do good in the easy classes that you already have to take. That's what I would say. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say just do classes on, do good on the classes that you already have to take. Because before nursing school, there's a lot of classes that are easy. There's English 101, there's, you know, there's, there was like um, statistics. Well, statistics was a little hard, I guess. But there's classes like that where you can do really good and bring your GPA up and save your, you know, GPA for the hard courses that are like anatomy, physiology, chemistry, microbiology, those class, those courses are probably going to bring your GPA down. But I don't know. I don't remember what the GPA is for LIU, but I think it's only like 3.0. So not bad. I think you can finesse that by just taking the classes that you're required to take, not taking extra classes just to bring it up, if that makes sense. So yeah, do you guys have any more questions before we end this live? Let me double check. I never found that. Um, I never found that list. And it was really long. It was like a lot of questions. Let me see if I could scroll up. Is math in the program hard? Nope. Super easy. Math in the program is like, well, some of the math questions are really easy. Some of the math questions are like, the doctor ordered 250 milligrams and you have um, 125 milligram tablets. So how many tablets are you gonna give? I think we all know. So it's kind of like that. It's pretty simple. The only thing that's like a little difficult is the drop factor. Um, equation. So you have to figure out what the IV rate is. And that's just a formula. You're literally just plugging it into the formula. And um, it, yeah, it's mainly conversions. So you would have to know, you know, a thousand, 
a thousand milliliters is one liter or like a thousand milligrams is one gram and like convert it before. So they just, and it's mostly just testing you that you wouldn't do something really silly and overdose or underdose someone. And you kind of, and you, there's another part where you have to do, I might do a video on this. There's another um, weight conversions where like the pediatric medications are based on their weight. So if you, um, if you weigh this amount, then this amount is safe for you to give the child. So you have to do some of those conversions, but it's not hard at all. It is not hard. Which nursing course uses any chemistry or math? Farm lab is where all your math comes in. And then in, in other classes, there are math questions incorporated into it, but it's mostly just farm, farm lab is mostly math. And then there's weight-based qu math questions in peds. There's a little bit of math question. I think there's like two questions per exam that's math in um, med surge, in maternity, in peds, and in health assessment. But again, they're really they're usually really, really easy. You just have to be careful and not make any mistakes. And also in our school, if you go to LIU, we have like a, we have this assessment every year, or every semester, no, every semester. They cancel it this, this semester because of COVID, but you, um, you have to get a hundred on that. And I remember last semester, not last semester, um, the spring semester, I was like super nervous because you literally cannot get one question wrong. You have to get a hundred and yeah. So yeah, you can use calculators. You can use a simple calculator just like this. Go to Dollar Tree, get you a cheap calculator. That's super simple because that's what, that's the only ones you can use. You can't use, um, like your watch. You can't use, um, any fancy scientific calculators. You just got to use a plain one. And um, some professors probably and not even like if you go online, some professors will probably tell you not to use the calculator because on lockdown browser, there's a way to you get the calculator on the screen. So they don't. Um, but sometimes that doesn't come up. So I just like to have my calculator on the side just in case, because I have taken exams on lockdown browser where the calculator did not show up. So imagine, you know, it's an easy conversion. You could do it without a calculator, but you kind of want to have the calculator just to make sure because you don't want to get an easy math question wrong just because you did it, not, did something silly. Which classes have conversions? So farm lab, and then there's, it's sprinkled in through all the classes for the rest of the semester. Like every class pretty much has like three math questions on each exam. Like I know for a fact med surge did, maternity did, peds did, and I think health assessment did. Yeah. And probably med search too, also. Oh yes, before I forget, I don't see an option anywhere on how to set up my Blackboard. Hmm, that's a good question. I would email Pia about that because I don't know how to set up Blackboard. I think that she has to give you your username because at first they give you the password. So I wouldn't be able to tell you what to, how to set it up, but you can email um, Pia.Haynes. Let me know if that's correct. I think it is. Um, I have this person for Farm Lab. I don't know who that is. For Farm Lab, I forgot who I had. It's it was um it was a really hard name to pronounce. A Russian guy. So I don't know about this person. But Farm Lab is not hard. So I wouldn't worry about who I had for Farm Lab. Farm Lab is mostly med math and like conversion. So I would not worry about farm lab. What's the difference between Post and Brooklyn? Do they have diff a different nursing program? So I'm actually not even sure because Post is basically like Long I in Long Island and I go to the one in Brooklyn. So I never really knew about Post, but I think they do have a similar nursing program. I've, this was news to me. I just found out recently that they had a nursing program, but I think they have like a, a similar program to ours. And I was wondering where the nursing student usually go for their clinicals, which hospitals. So we go all over. You don't get a choice. You just go wherever they find room because it's really hard for them to find room for us. Because if you think about it, there's all these nursing students all over New York. And then there's only so many hospitals that and only so much so many parts of the hospital that would even accept nurses because it's kind of a liability, liability, I guess. But um, yeah, we, I know for a fact, we have um, some clinicals at Maimonides, 
We have some clinicals at Lincoln, which is all the way uptown. There's some um, at Kings County. I know I had, I don't know if they still do that, but there was a nursing home or nursing home around the corner from Kings County. I don't think they have any in downstate. There's some in the city too, but yeah, I think a lot of us go to Maimonides. You probably had pass. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I think I did. I think that was his name. Yeah, no worries. Cause farm lab is not a big deal. I told you it's just math and I'm gonna be making a video on um, med math on the basics of med math. Cause you do, they're probably going to bring back that whole med math assessment where, should, where it's like, I think 20 questions or 15 questions or something like that. And you have to get a hundred on it in order to pass, um, in order to move on to the next semester. So you definitely want to be good on your math and be able to carefully do it to the point where you don't make any mistakes. Cause it's very easy to like, you know, just put a decimal point somewhere it wasn't supposed to be or something like that or do a conversions or whatever. His reviews were horrible. <laughs> yeah, I could see why honestly, but it wasn't like, yeah, hundred out of a hundred. He wasn't bad, he wasn't bad. It's, it's farm lab, so it's like, you can't really, People who probably gave him bad reviews or people who are expecting more from the class. <laughs> yeah. And people who are probably not good at math, but yeah, I'm gonna make a video on med math and you're gonna be fine. So yeah, they're gonna bring that back eventually. They canceled it for this year because of COVID, but I'm 100% sure they're gonna bring that back. I had Methodist, Maimonides and Northwell. Nice. Which one was your favorite? Cause I've never been, um, I've never had one in Methodist or Northwell. I know I've only ever been to Maimonides, Lincoln, and um, Kingsbrook. And Lincoln, I was only there for like one day. And then COVID happened, so. Yeah, you can't go based on reviews. Sometimes the reviews be really bad and the, it, it, the professors don't even really be that bad. Oh, here's the list. Um, how much time do you study for each class? I already answered that. It really depends on each class. Is it a must to study in groups? Hmm, it kind of is, honestly. It's not a must to study in groups right off the bat. Like it's good to study by yourself first and then just join a group like before the exam and just review everything. Like to me, I like to study by myself, actually read because if I'm in a group, I'm not gonna really read what I'm supposed to be reading. So I would read what I'm supposed to be reading first and then go to, you know, a group before, like the day before the test and just refresh. So I wouldn't say like study in a group, but I would definitely say review in a group. It would definitely, definitely help because somebody might pick up on something that you didn't hear. Like somebody would just be like, oh, she said, you know, this was really important and you didn't hear when she said that because you was writing something down or something like that. And that could save you a whole question. You know what I mean? And then another one, do you get to use calculators in med math? Yes, you do. You do get to use simple, basic calculators, not, um, not scientific ones. Being that you were in the program before, how different would you say it is now? Has it improved, stayed the same, or become worse? Hmm, I think the program has, I think it has stayed, stayed the same. I think it really has stayed the same. I think that I changed, not the program. I think the program is still sometimes kind of disorganized and um, it's kind of like a self-serve kind of program. You have to do everything you have to do for yourself. You can't really depend on, you know, no one's gonna spoon feed you anything. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna do well if you're one of those people who were like baby through free recs and like teachers have coddled you and things like that and like gave you gave you extensions when you forgot about homework and stuff like that none of that is going to happen none of that is going to most of the time none of that is going to happen so i think um the program's not really different i think the the classes are different and maybe i think the teachers have improved because first semester hot mess hot mess hot mess hot mess yeah hot mess that's all i can say before I get in trouble. <laughs> Hot mess. So yeah, I don't think um I don't think the program has has really changed. I think it's more than I that I changed and I learned how to study better and I learned what I needed to do to do well in the program. 
It says how organized are there are they in terms of paperwork and clinicals. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a crap ton of students. There's a lot of us and there's only so many of them. So a lot of the times information gets lost and it's up to you to, you know, reach out to who you have to reach out with to and get your questions answered. You can't really wait for them to make an announcement or anything like that. You kind of have to figure it out on your own and make sure that you have all the information that you need. So in terms of paperwork for clinicals, it's kind of all over the place because you need a lot done for clinicals. Like if you, I don't know if you guys already set up your Castle Branch or anything like that, but Castle Branch is a lot to do. You have to do a drug test. You have to do a, a physical. You have to get certain vaccines. You have to, um, you have to do a bunch of stuff. And it's like, you have to know that who the clinical coordinator is and relay your questions to that person and get your know that you need to get whatever those checkpoints are for Castle Branch before clinical is done yourself. You can't really wait for them to be like, oh, did you do this? Did you do that? Nobody's going to ask you. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a self-serve um, kind of program. And then let me see this last question. I have another question. Okay, I answered this question already. All right, so I think that's all the questions. Do you guys have any more questions before I log off? If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified the next time we do a live. We might keep this going because I think it was really helpful to answer your questions. So if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, um, I guess that's no more questions. There's no more questions. If you guys do have any more questions that I didn't answer or anything like that, follow me on Instagram. I will definitely answer. I'm like, I, I answer everyone pretty quickly whenever you guys have questions because I know how it is. And I know like when I was um, in your position, I had a lot of questions and sometimes it takes a while to get questions answered. But thank you guys for being on this live. Let me see. Nope, that's all for now. Thank you. You're awesome. Tanya for president. Fun fact, I actually ran for president and I lost. <laughs> but I'm glad I did because it would have been too much work with school. They, um, I didn't know that um, the president had that much work to do. I was way out of my league with that. But thank you. Thanks for logging on, guys. You guys are the best. If you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys. Good luck with your semester. You're awesome. This was helpful. You're welcome. That's all. Thank you for the information. You're welcome, guys. Have a good semester. Good luck. <laughs>